Uh, thank you very much. Uh, once again, it's a good, very good morning uh, here at KUTV Elimu Live. My name is Zako Pondo, a teacher of English and Literature at Wahondura High School. And today I'm going to take us through English Paper 3. English Paper 3, uh, as I say, maybe I'll just do a recap of what we've covered in the past. So uh, English is coded as uh, 101. So 101 stroke 1 is Paper 1. 101 stroke 2 is paper 2, and then 101 stroke 3 is the paper 3. So paper 1, once again, carries 60 marks. 60 marks. Paper 2 carries 80 marks. And paper 3 carries 60 marks. So in the past two sessions, you've looked at uh, the first two papers, that is paper 1 and paper 2. And today, I want us just to focus on paper three. How better can we score the 60 marks? Again, uh, this is the paper that focuses on majorly three essays. So paper three focuses on three essays. So we, we are going to talk about the writing of the essays, that is on question one. That is what we call imaginative essay. Then question two is an essay from a compulsory compulsory set text. And then question three, yeah, there are three essays, but you choose one. These are essays from optional texts optional texts. So again, unlike Kiswahili, English uh, paper three, English we have five set books that we are supposed to study uh, in the course of the four year journey, but two are compulsory, then the rest are, are optional. So we have this book that is uh, The Blossoms of Savannah. It's a compulsory set book that uh, is, will be tested until the year uh, KCC 2022 a compulsory set text, Blossoms of the Savannah. Then the next compulsory set text that we deal with is A Doll's House. A Doll's House. So these two books are tested interchangeably in question one. That is, uh, every year they are alternated in question one. Once, the moment one is tested on question one, then it means the, or the other one will be tested uh, in paper two. If one appears on paper three, one appears on paper two. That has been the trend uh, for some time. Having looked at that, then we look at the three optional set books. We have Memories We Lost, compiled by the late Chris Wangela, <coughs> Memories We Lost. Then we have The Inheritance. Uh, this is a book that was done by David Mulwa. And the third book that is also tested under the optional text is The Pearl by John Stenbach. So it's always advisable for the student to prepare in all the, th all the five set books so that uh, you have a variety to choose from when it comes to uh, the compulsory and the optional set text. So I want to just delve deep into this. So we will begin with uh, how to do imaginative essays. Imaginative essays. And I'll just take us through some of the imaginative essays that have been tested over time. Maybe uh, before we get there, let's just look into the objective. So this paper, my focus is that uh, to ensure that the student know what is expected of them. So this paper expects you to one, to write legibly and neatly. So you're expected to write legibly and neatly. So this is one. What the students need to take note of is write legibly and neatly. Write legibly and neatly. Number two, you also need, as you write question one, that observe all the spelling rules and spell the words correctly. So once again, imaginative essay employs all, all rules of grammar. It employs all rules of grammar. Then this question also expects you to, when we talk about rules of grammar, we talk about punctuations, 
or what you call the syntactic rules, the aspect of syntax, grammar, subject, verb, agreement, etc. All aspects of grammar applies here. We also need to expect you to have uh, logical sentences. Logical sentences. You just don't write. Ensure that you're writing sentences that are making sense, just not only to you, but also to the reader. Because every time the, the, the examiner is reading your script, this examiner, you are not there to explain probably what you meant. So just ensure that you write logical sentences. Uh, just to add uh, lucidity to your writing, ensure that you write pleasantly. So you're talking about pleasant expressions. Pleasant expressions, expressions that are making sense to us and that are appealing to us emotionally. This also employs the use of figurative language. Communication in style. Communication in style. Ensure that as you speak, you are leaving a definite spark or memories in the mind of the person who is going to, to mark your work. So, again, let's just delve deep into, uh, let's just break it down to question one. So, question one comes in two different ways. Question one comes in two different ways. In most cases, it is tested as either A or B. So for several years, it's come into question one A and one B. So a student is expected to choose either one A or one B. So I'll take us through just a few how they've been tested over time, maybe which one was in 1A, which one was in 1B, ETC. So I'll begin from the year 2014, where 2014 the question was, you had to write a story beginning with, when I arrived at the crime scene, then we had ellipsis. When I arrived at the crime scene, we had ellipsis. After that, there was an ellipsis, and then we have question 1B that was asking you, write a story to illustrate the saying, charity begins at home. So we have 1A, was a continue uh, a composition with a beginning. The big the composition that had got a beginning phrase. Then the part B in 2014, we had a composition that had a saying. It had a saying. Now 2015 again, question one A was write a story to illustrate the saying. You reap what you sow. So again, so 2014 was a saying. 2015, 1A, you are given a saying. And 1B, ask the student to do what? To write the story of what you should have done to reduce indiscipline in school. So again, uh, that is uh, 1B, 1, 1, 1, 1B 2015, what you could do to reduce indiscipline in school. We're also going to look at some of the sample compositions that are going to, maybe, that can just make your writing so impressive. 2016, question 1A was, write a story to illustrate the saying, the early bird catches the worm. So again, 2016 was a saying, the early bird catches the worm. Part B was, write a story beginning, I regretted having Riziki as my friend. So. Again, 2016, we had a story with a what? With a beginning. I regret having a Riziki, having Riziki as my friend. 2017, it was quite technical because you are told write a story to include the following. A wallet, a letter, and a reward. So again, this is just a creative writing that was to introduce a wallet, a letter, and a reward. So these three phrases had to appear. There was no starting, no ending, no saying. But you just told to write a story beginning with a story that has the, the three words, a reward, a letter, and a wallet. Then part B was write a composition on the effects of corruption and what the government can do uh, to end it. So again, 
discussive essay or an expository essay about what? Corruption. And what the government can do to probably to end corruption. Corruption, as you know, corruption is a menace in this country. 2018, there was a, a story that has what you call a started composition. Write a story to begin with. I wondered why the principal had summoned me. I wondered why the principal had summoned me. Then part B was simply to describe your village. So again, the question is how best can we describe our village? 2019, we had a, as again two, two questions, so that is one A and B. I was mistaken to have thought that the night would be like other peaceful nights, okay? Just to be a started composition for you. I was mistaken to have thought that the night would be like other peaceful nights. So again, you are to build up a story from that phrase. But B had uh, write a composition on the advantages and disadvantages of the internet. Advantages and the disadvantages of the internet. It's also good to note that majority of the students talked about uh, advantages and disadvantages of computers. So it's also good just to know the demand of the question. KCC 2020, again we had part A and B. So part A you are to write a story that has got the ending. That is when I realized that a genuine friend is one who walks in when the rest walk out on you. Write a story ending with the phrase, uh, that is when I realized that a genuine friend is the one who walks in when the rest walk out on you. Then part B was write a story on how to conserve forest. Write a story on how to conserve forests, our forest that is. So why am I bringing out this? Just, this is just to show us that this paper comes in, this question, uh, uh, sorry for that, comes in different forms. This question comes in different forms. It can come in A, maybe a started composition. Started composition. B, we had the ending composition. Then the part three, or the another way that we can test this is what is called expository, expository writing. Either expository or discursive, discursive writing, whereby you're given a saying or you're given uh, something, a subject just to discuss and then you're supposed to deliver. So what our emphasis is on, how therefore do we ensure that we develop these compositions better. So when you're given a started composition, one, the phrase that you've been given there is called a rubric. That phrase must be present. So the starting phrase, the starting phrase must be included. Failure to which you will lose an automatic deduction of up to two marks. So ensure that the starting phrase is there. If you have given, if you're given an ending composition, again, the ending phrase, the ending phrase must form the last sentence of your essay. Don't write anything after it. If you're given a started composition, don't write anything before it. Write that phrase and then you're supposed to continue with it. Now, in expository writing and discursive essays, this is where you are supposed to uh, just what we call the factual compositions. Factual compositions. So give us facts. Give us facts based on the topic in question. We are talking about uh, how to conserve forest. Do you have facts on how to conserve forest? So just give us facts on what is needed. If you're given a saying composition, maybe like KCC 2014, charity begins at home. You've been given that saying, you just, you're supposed to write about it. One, you need to ne take note, do not explain. Do not, do not explain the meaning. Do not explain the meaning of the proverb. Your story should bring out the meaning of the proverb. Your story, 
is the one that should bring out the meaning in the proverb. Don't struggle uh, trying to explain or charity begins at home. Don't even break it down to start uh, giving us explanations for each and every format. So I want us to take us through steps to uh, imaginative writing. So there are various uh, types of imaginative writings. The first one is what is called the narrative. Narrative format. So you've been given a started composition. You are supposed to continue with it. All that we need to, you need to take note of is we are simply just going to do what? A narrative. A narrative format. So this is where you just continue with that story. Narrate to us what is happening. We can divide a narrative format or a narrative story into five different parts. The first part is the initial stage. I was, sus I, I was shocked why the principal summoned me. So the initial stage is where you introduce the story, introduce the situation, introduce the main characters. Then after that, we go to the middle stage. The middle stage, this is where you start building your story, OK? Now, in the middle stage, it ushers us into the conflict. The conflict. So remember, you introduced your protagonist here. That is the main character. You introduce the main character and the antagonist, somebody who stands in the way of the main character and hinders them from achieving a particular objective. So as these two characters and others interact, we also have supporting characters. You have to bring out the conflict, OK? As you move to the conflict, then the conflict will drive us into what is called a critical stage. A critical stage. Now, in the critical stage, this is where the characters try to sort out themselves in reactions and counter reactions. How are these characters reacting to each other? OK? How, are the, how is the protagonist interacting with the antagonist? OK? How are the build up characters, maybe the other characters that are introduced in your story, how are they interacting with these two characters, the critical stage? After that, then, we move to the climax. The climax of your story. This is the highest level of a story, OK? The conflict goes to the maximum. You develop it to the maximum. And then once you get to the conflict, then we move to the final stage. You move to the final stage. So in the final stage, this is where we, we do what now? You end your story, OK? There is a resolution. Resolution of, of the conflict, OK? The conflict that you developed in the middle stage. Then in the final stage, it ensures that your conflict is resolved, OK? Sometimes the final stage can also encompass the use of suspense. Just employ suspense. Leave your learners or leave, leave your readers yearning for more. They should be asking themselves, what happened, OK? So as you develop your story from the beginning to the end, to make your story more memorable in the, in the mind of the reader, just employ the use of figurative language. The use of figurative language. Employ styles. Have twists, twists, and turns. Don't just write a story that uh, probably you woke up in the morning, ran to the dining hall, took a breakfast. That is so predicted story. No. Talk about a situation whereby you woke up so late, ran into the dining hall, and only to discover that students had taken your bre their breakfast and the teacher was on duty was already standing there. Or probably you are trying to run away from this teacher. But as you make one turn, you find that they are the ones standing on, on the other side. So just develop twists and turns, OK? You are in the bathroom, and probably your phone rings. So what do you do? You, 
okay? Only to realize as you rush to pick it, then you discover it was just a what? A, a mistaken alarm. So again, develop that story. So as you look at that, as you develop your story, consider what is called the plot. This is the key thing as you write your narrative story. The key thing is the plot. The plot is simply the flow of ideas. Ensure that your story is not jacky. It doesn't have the back and forth. So we are talking about the plot. This is the flow of events. OK? As I talk about the beginning, the middle, and the end. So when you do the plot, we'll have your story begin from here. So as you develop the story from the beginning to the end, what happens in here? What happens from the beginning to the end? So at the beginning, just develop your story. Introduce a complication, what you're calling the conflict. Introduce the complication, the actions. Then the highest level of story we've said is the climax, OK? And as at the climax, don't go up. This is the maximum level, the area of tension. Then from then, we develop the falling action. As you try to find out the solution to the conflict, then you move to the, to the end, OK? The falling action, then you move to the end. So develop your story. So at every, each and every stage, Ask yourself, what is happening? OK? Don't just write a story that begins from here. It comes to the end. It gets so ensure there is order. There is order, OK? Have kind of a linear, linear episodes. Linear episodes of what? Of actions. Just try to bring them. Uh, uh, at that point also, some of the styles that you can use here includes flashback. So as you begin your story to the end, introduce styles such as flashback. I remembered why, I, I wondered why the principal had summoned me. Then probably you remember that the previous evening, you were among the noisemakers in class, or the previous evening, or the previous weekend, you had gone out maybe for a for a, for a, for a, for a you had gone out as a club, and you did an exemplary activity, OK? Ensure there is a chronological layout, OK? Events should come in a particular order. I said, don't go to the dining hall, come back to the bathroom, move to class, run to the field, etc. Ensure there is the order, the order, the order. Then, after the plot, or as you develop the plot, consider the setting. The setting of your story. Don't create a story that is standing in space. Where is that story taking place? Where is the story taking place? When is it taking place? Is it in the past? OK. Something else is to consider here is the choice of characters. The choice of characters. Ensure that your character, characters have got the face of human beings. We've heard of giants, but in my life, I've never met any. So ensure that your characters are not giants. So again here, avoid oral narratives here. Avoid oral narrative characters. In the real life, animals don't speak. So do not have animal characters. Do not have giant characters. So your choice of characters. These are simply imaginary people. but. They should have the traits of real people. Ensure your characters have good traits of real people. Ensure your characters have physical features of, of real people. So as you develop your story, just decide on the characters. So we've talked about imaginative composition. So let's talk about maybe how to talk about a, a factual composition. How do you describe a factual composition? So we talked about narrative compositions, so we're going to look at the factual compositions. Factual 
compositions. So in factual compositions, this is where you bring out facts, advantages and disadvantages of the internet, okay? How to conserve our forest? What facts do you have? All you need to do is identify the idea. Identify the idea. What are we supposed to talk about here is the internet. So after identifying the idea, what do you do next? Explain the idea. Explain the idea. After explaining the idea, what do you do? Give evidence. Give evidence of the idea. After that, what do you do? Persuade the reader. Persuade. Persuade the reader. You want to talk about the advantages. You want to talk about conserving the forest. Can you persuade us to believe in what you want us to say? What, what you are telling us. Persuade us. Help us to come to your come to your school of thought. Okay? So I'll just read for us an example of a, a discursive composition, maybe a factual composition. The, the question was, uh, discuss the ways by which students strike in school can be, can be curbed. So again, you're going to give us facts. Describe ways in which strikes in schools can be curbed. So these students begin the narrative, the story by saying, school fires leave three dead. What a devastating destruction for parents in that school, and that was in CAPS. And more of such devastating headline items are the news that the dailies treat us to every other school time. And what should be more worrying is the fact that these concerned minors, who apart from being the future leaders, are also driving themselves into the kind of destructive abyss. More disturbing is that nobody not even the government with all the massive resources has been able to put a stop to this madness. A solution must be found by all means before we lose whole lots of generations. And that is how paragraph one is done. Paragraph two, the student goes ahead and says, first, the teachers need to think twice. It causes no harm in sitting around with your students and talking and making all inclusive and well such decisions on matters affecting the children. Atticus view, Atticus Finch once said that you never really understand a person until you consider things from their point of view, until you climb inside their skins and walk around in them. For instance, if learning hours are to be discuss, discussed, the teachers and the students must discuss considering all the pros and cons. Which changes should affect their levels of concentration and why such changes would be necessary. There was an incident in a school where the principal negotiated World Cup times with students. They would watch some matches, but those times had to be recovered from their free times. It worked very well. It therefore means changes affected after decision will always be agreeable to both parties. These are factual compositions. We are talking about facts. Paragraph three. The government must stop being arbitrary in the laws governing children rights. The laws around us seem to be to overprotect the child without considering the position of the adult in the minor's life. Teachers are important in nurturing responsible children for their growth for their future growth of the country. When any law concerning the child is made, the teacher and any adult must be given room to administer some minimal correction measures. Uh, uh, minimal correctional measures upon their students. And the recipient, who is the student, must be made completely aware of those openings so that he does not find himself in a quagmire of misdemeanor. As things stand now, the child seems to be above the law because he has all the advantages in law over the adults. Paragraph three, paragraph four, sorry. Also, students must always remember that nothing 
absolutely nothing comes without a toil. Peter F. Drucker, in his last speech, reminds us that no one would ever hand over anything to you on a silver platter. You have to toil for it. The world of success is only kind to that person who is asleep. That person who thinks of tomorrow. That person who denies himself some comfort today. That person who respects the rule of law. And ultimately, those that listen to those who succeed before them. Achebe says, if a child washes his hands clean, he would comfortably eat with elders. Our children have soiled their hands so much with school fires and general indiscipline. Who would ever want to sit with them on a table? That's a question, a, a, a kind of a rhetoric question that's going to uh, awaken our thinking. So this is a student who is employing the use of styles. Finally, it is incumbent upon every living soul to put an abrupt end to indiscipline manners. We must learn to work with like gears. When one moves, they all move. Everybody would be on board and then maybe, just maybe, we would be able to solve this pandemonium that, uh, the pandemonium that is student strife. Again, this is a composition that is found in Hitmark, uh, English episodic approach by uh, Maloa Maloa. So you can just get this. There's a story, there's a, an excellent story. So this is a student that is just trying to, to explore, to build on a story, give us facts on how to sort out uh, fires. Maybe again, before I move to question two, I will read a sample composition of an imaginative essay. Now, the story goes by saying, write a composition beginning, the old man sighed and got to his feet, leaning heavily on his cane. Then you're supposed to continue from there. As we said, when you're given a started composition, ensure that you include that phrase as you start. So the story goes, the old man sighed and got his feet, leaning heavily on his cane. He took a slow measured steps to the edge of the pyre, gazing at the magnificent but dimming horizon, lit by the golden embers of the setting sun, making it seem as if the ocean waters were a sea of liquid gold. The sight reminded him of the day he met his beautiful wife of 60 years. Right at the edge of that very pyre, a small dry smile broke on the side of his face as he reminisced about those days, and he clung clearly as he recently done on, th on those memories for much needed comfort. So again, as you continue, discover that even that paragraph already employs the aspect of flashback, the artistic use of language, vocabularies, the words such as reminisce, okay? Uh, uh, age of the pyre, magnificent but a dimming horizon, the golden embers of the setting sun, that is uh, the fluid use of language, the artistic use of language, the pleasantness of language. Paragraph 2 says, A tap on his shoulder brought him back from his reverie, and he turned to look at his only grandson, James, who wore a sad look on his face. So we had the first character as the old man, given by the question. Then now we are introducing the second character, the grandson of this old man that is called James. It's time, Grandpa, he whispered. The old man simply nodded and let his grandson lead him back uh, to the car where they took the agonizing drive to Grace Lawn Hospital. They knew the drive all too well, for they had been taking it for several months now. Again, we have a style of dialogue. So as we build up our narrative composition, ensure you employ different styles. Dialogue, flashback. Use simple but clear vocabularies. Much of that composition, again, you can find them on, on the hit mark series. So, question one, the part A and B, a student is supposed to choose. Choose only one. Choose only one question, okay? Don't go for two. So, after that, this question will give you 20 marks. It will give you 20 marks. Then now we move to question two. So question two and question three have a similar approach. 
question two and three have a similar approach. So as I said, question two are essays from compulsory set text, the text that I just shown you. Then question three, you are only supposed to answer one question from the what? From the optional, from the optional text. So let's look at how therefore do we attempt this question. Because we need to So it takes it it's uh, question two and three. Take note of the following. They are going to these are question that is based on a literary text. Read and understand the question in the following stages. Read and understand the question in the following stages. So number one, absorb and understand. Read the work as a whole and try to understand the keywords in the question. So for you to get the best of this is you need to read, read the set books. I'm underlining the word set books. Avoid guidebooks. Read the set book and understand the set book. Number two, consider and analyze the main features of the question. So once read the question, read the question, understand the question, understand the question. Number three is think and discover the full meaning of the or the intention. Intention of the question. Why do you think the examiner is asking? It's good to note that uh, this question has been testing you on morals. Uh, take us through sample question. The questions are based purely on morals. KCC 2015, it tested on discontent in Becky and Otieno Kembo. That's the river and the source. It's no longer in the syllabus. Twent uh, then we have a question that also tested on selfish actions, on retraction, role of relatives betrayal in the city. That was 2015. Exposure of visitors other countries depend depends our understanding on the world. That is a story called the whale rider. So if you look at QCC 2018, no, let, let's look at 2019 because these are the current set books that we are dealing with. Irresponsible decisions, a moral issue in Blossoms of Savannah. Evils of war, a moral issue in the story The President by Marietta Kamaru. Ill-gotten wealth can br uh, can't bring happiness. That is bad leadership on the story uh, from the, the play The Inheritance by David Mulwa. Or Desire Without Limits, being the source of agony. We look at that. That was from The Pearl by John Stenbach. Uh, number KCC 2020, again, a story, maybe uh, an essay from Doll's House. Heart association associated with quitting a relationship in response to Nora and the people, the, the other characters who are quitting the relationships in, in Doll's House. Love and teamwork, we find that in the Pearl. Ch challenges in urban slums, hitting Budapest, that's a story in Memories We Lost. Ineffective leadership, the inheritance. So as you approach paper three, remember, all the questions, even as you prepare, they'll be centered on the aspect of morality. These questions are centered on morality. What are the moral issues? As you read that set book, what moral issues are addressed? Are addressed in the story? Is it an aspect of Corruption? Is it about relationship? I know. Uh, as you look at that, just ask yourself, what are the moral issues? So, how do you answer questions in paper three? Read the question keenly. Read the question keenly. So, the exam tip is how? One, read the question keenly. Number two, underline the keywords. Underline the keywords. Number three, identify. Identify the intention of the question. 
identify the intention of the question. What moral issue is being addressed here? What vice is being discouraged? Then the final thing is develop the develop the point of interpretation. Develop the point of interpretation. So the moment you underline the keywords, it will now guide you. It will now guide you to uh, to, to just uh, build on this. So after doing this, remember, an essay has four parts. An essay has got three parts, sorry. So the first part is the introduction. Then we have the body, and then we have the conclusion. So having understood the question, having identified the intention of the question, now come and do what? Write your introduction. Then this introduction will be marked two marks. Then the body, we, you need to develop four paragraphs. You need to develop four paragraphs and then the conclusion. So conclusion, you have to conclude. Do not introduce any new idea in the conclusion. So how therefore is this marked? We find the introduction is marked two marks, then the body is 12 marks, conclusion is two marks, then language is usually four marks. So how best, therefore, do you ensure that you score? Uh, 12 marks, they are developed into four paragraphs. So that means three, 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 three. Three marks per paragraph. So how do we score the maximum three marks even as we, as, as, as we just conclude this? One, identify the action, okay? For example, in the story in effective leadership in the blossoms of the, in, in the, the inheritance, the action is identify the aspect of ineffective leadership, then bring out the outcome, then the background information. This is where students fail. So as you're looking at each and every paragraph, identify the point, okay? The point that you want to talk about, the outcome. Remember, these stories are two-sided nowadays. You have one that leads to the other. So we have the outcome. Then the background. The background of the point that you've just given us. What, how did it start, okay? Then after that, just move and give us the clincher or the concluding sentence, the clincher sentence. So the point is what is what we call the topic sentence. So once you have the topic sentence, have two to three illustrations that give us, uh, two, to three to two to three illustrations that builds on the topic sentence and then have the clincher sentence. So as I conclude that part of today's series, I want just to read for us a story that we had last year. Maybe a set book, I'll just read one because again this can be tested this year. So we have, uh, I'll just read from probably the inheritance, a story from the inheritance. Yes, so that aspect of bad leadership. So this is a sample paragraph. So more often than not, inefficient leaders are brutal. That is the topic sentence. Then the student goes ahead and now does what? Illustrate, and he says, Bengo tells Tamina that elected leaders are servants, not masters. But are they? When Judah refuses to murder his brother Bengo as instructed by Lakuna, he is fired and beaten up to a pulp. He is saved by Dr. Jonathan. The cruel leader also arrests and detains Bengo for dissenting his savage leadership. Now he's giving us the background information. Reverend Sangoi says many people disappeared on the day of the coronation. Lakuna wants Lulu to perform for him at his palace, but his mother protests vehemently. She wants Tamina uh, she wants Tamina, but okay, so we, we just did that. Then see, she says, Lacuna killed the father. Judah was murdered, but Lacuna passed it off as an accident caused by rotting machines. Robert dismisses this and affirms that it was a murder for Judah. The background is so the student must give the background of each and every point. Again, much of this you can 
uh, follow uh, Wekati blogspot. You'll just find a sample essay that, that was done for previous, previous years. So as we conclude this, as we summarize paper three, uh, go to take note of the following. That number one, paper three has three questions. Paper three has three questions. Question one, 20 marks. This is about creative writing. Creative writing. Then question two, 20 marks. This one is an essay from a compulsory set text. And then question three, 20 marks. An essay from optional texts. An essay from optional texts. So take note of this. Just read. Paper three is not tricky. It's not difficult. All it requires is a presence of mind. It requires a student to have an in-depth look into the books, an in-depth look into the stories, reading the stories in person. It's good, like a book like Blossoms of the Savannah. You need to read it like 12 times before you see it for your KCSE. Go through that book. It's as simple as it is. It may look voluminous, but very interesting. So fall in love with the set book. Avoid guidebooks as much as possible. So I want just to tell us that that marks the end of this uh, KCC preparation series. You can watch this link. If you have any question, just put it uh, at the end of the live, at the end of this live broadcast. Yeah, just go through, leave your comment there, and we'll be glad to attend to them. So thank you so much, students. Thank you so much, teachers. I have been your teacher, Zach Opondra, teacher of English and Literature at Wakundura High School.